depression, discouragement, anxiety, are just some of the issues that afflict our society. But is there a solution for it? In many cases, seeking professional medical assistance is crucial. But in other cases, the solution might just lie in the counsel St. Paul gives to St. Timothy in today's first reading. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria. Today the Church celebrates two of St. Paul's closest disciples, Saints Timothy and Titus. And in the suggested gospel for today's memorial, our Lord sends out his 72 disciples saying to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master to send out laborers for his harvest. But was the problem here a lack of personnel, of religious vocations? Not entirely. Referencing this gospel passage, St. Gregory the Great remarked, See how full the world is of priests, but yet in God's harvest, a true laborer is rarely to be found. So the problem back then, and even more so nowadays, isn't merely a scarcity of religious vocations, but a dearth of true laborers, wholly committed to their sacred calling. You see, most of those who decided to embark on the path to the priesthood and religious life did so with the noblest and purest of intentions. They aspired to follow in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ, dedicating their lives to saving souls. And their selfishness and dedication are truly inspiring and commendable. However, over time, many priests and religious become complacent. The demands of the priesthood coupled with the lack of vigilance and unwillingness to reach new heights of holiness lead many to prioritize comfort over pastoral duties. And as a result, the harvest is left unattended. But don't think that this spiritual decline only applies to priests and nuns. How many couples marry with high hopes only to separate after a few years? Or how many enter law or politics to uphold moral standards only to find themselves down the road preoccupied solely with obtaining power or personal gains? Or how many enter the area of medicine to save lives only to fall short of their obligations to respect the dignity of their fellow human beings. And not out of malice necessarily, but in most cases, it's because they lost sight of the goals and ideals they initially set out to pursue. So what's the solution, one of the solutions to all those, to all of us, who from time to time, like Timothy, become discouraged. In today's first reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, he writes, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. In essence, St. Paul urges Timothy to recall his springtime graces those graces and blessings he received at the onset of his spiritual journey, in this case, his ordination. So that by looking back at where he started, he'd be able to once again see what his ultimate goal was. It's like crossing a river or a void using the Tyrolean Traverse, which is a method where a rope is secured on either side of a gorge and one gets across by hauling oneself hand over hand. Initially, they see the other side clearly, albeit at a distance. But as they get towards the middle, the rope, their body weight, makes the rope droop lower and lower, making it difficult to see the other side. The only way to see where they're headed 
is by remembering what it looked like before crossing. That's the same with our spiritual life. Sometimes it can be tough to see our goals or how much we've progressed in the midst of spiritual battles or even in our tedious routines. And so we need to recall from time to time the ideals that drove us to take those big decisions in life, like getting married to that person or pursuing that particular career or profession. And by reflecting on our springtime graces, we'll be better prepared to remain steadfast in our vocation and encouraged to progress even more. With the intercession of Saints Timothy and Titus, may we be true laborers in the Lord's harvest by continually stirring into flame the gift of God we have received through the sacraments and so many other countless graces and blessings we have received in our lives. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.